is almost midsummer in Sweden and I decided to revisit a movie that has become a cult classic, Midsummer. The first time I saw this movie, it shocked me to the core, maybe because I'm not used to watching scary movies or maybe because of Ari Aster's storytelling style that we also see in his movie, Hereditary. Nonetheless, it really shocked me to the core and it's one of my favorite horror movies. But then after the shock calmed down, I realized the movie has a very interesting anti-white supremacist message. So I've decided to revisit this movie after having watched it more than four years ago. So what's Midsummer about? So Midsummer is about uh, Danny, her boyfriend, and his group of friends who are invited to this Midsummer festival by their Swedish friend and colleague Pele and everything that happens during this festival. So, as I mentioned before, Pele is a Swedish guy who's a colleague and friends with Josh, Mark, and Christian, and eventually he becomes friends with uh, Danny, who is Christian's girlfriend. And Pele invites them to come to the festival that will be happening in Horga in Helsingland, uh, in Sweden and this festival is not like any just normal midsummer festival because it's like a special festival that happens in his like cultish community every 90 years. When Dani is invited to the festival she's at a very vulnerable stage in her life. Her sister has been struggling with mental health issues and both her sister and her parents pass away in a very very horrible way which i will not get into details but if you watch the movie you know what happened to them all of this makes uh, danny very very vulnerable to fall into the cult i find pele's character extremely interesting and scary because he's so soft-spoken and also he's very manipulative and not only how he divides the group but also how he pushes uh, their bottoms like he knows exactly how to get to them especially like Josh who's the only black guy and I will talk into more details about the relationship between Pele and Josh in the movie I believe Pele is a well-written character. The Swedish actor who played Pele, Wilhelm Blumbreng, he did a fantastic job. So thank you so much for your acting. And I will always be a Pele hater because of your amazing job portraying this character. I did a video reaction and commentary about the Midsummer movie, the director's cut that it's on my Patreon, where I talk into more details about the things I like and I dislike about this movie, as well as more like in-depth movie analysis, not only about the white supremacy uh, criticism that is I see in the movie, but also by like cults and things like that. So yeah, go check it out in my Patreon. I wanna talk about two things that I really, really, really dislike about the movie Midsommar. Number one, the runestones in the movie are lame. Couldn't they just go to one of the thousands of runestones that are in Sweden, like in Stockholm, there has to be like at least a thousand runestones. And couldn't they just go to, to those places? And of course, I understand there are scenes that they can't do with actual runestones, but couldn't they at least like get some extremely, extremely high quality runestones photos and replicate them for the movie? Because like the runestones replicas that are in the movie are lame and they look very, very fake. So yeah, I didn't like them at all. And complaint number two I have about the movie is that the forest don't look Scandinavian. I was like, when I was watching the movie and especially when I was watching the scene of Danny Ron through the forest I was like where are the birches I was like okay where are the birches I need birches do you have any complaints about the movie let me know in the comment section
Now let's talk about the reasons why I think this movie has a very interesting anti-white supremacist message. Racism can be subtle and because it is subtle it doesn't mean that racism is not violent. For example, when they're driving towards Helsingland, Pele intentionally asked Josh uncomfortable questions about slavery and similar topics. And I've seen this before, like white people asking shocking questions to non-white people to try to trigger them and push their buttons. And of course, when you confront them, they're like, oh no, 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 I didn't mean that. I also feel there was a lot of subdued hostility towards Josh coming from Pele. Like, for example, Pele would ignore questions Josh was asking about the ceremonies and traditions that were happening during the midsummer celebrations. Maybe because he knew that at the end of it, it wouldn't matter because they would get rid of Josh or maybe because he just didn't like him for obvious reasons. Because let's be honest, like Josh was the only black guy that went to this community. Josh is doing a PhD on midsummer celebrations throughout Europe, but even though he does something very disrespectful in the movie, like when he went to take photos of their sacred books without their permission in the middle of the night, um, it's obvious that he's treated differently than his white peers. And just a quick note, like a lot of Americans dismiss racism in Europe because they understand that the only country in the world that is racist is the US, when in reality that's not true. So if you have like white European friends who are saying a racist comment, call them out. So yeah, I just wanted to make that very quick comment because maybe that's the reason why like Josh just dismissed a lot of like microaggressions that were happening towards them. Maybe because he just wanted to finish his PhD is like a passion project that he has put a lot of work and effort into it. But I do believe he was aware of the microaggressions that were happening, especially because of other things that happened in the movie that I will discuss about further. We all know that white supremacists are obsessed with old Norse traditions. And I already did an episode where I talk about that topic into details. So go check it out. I'm not saying it because I did it. It's a really Really, really really good episode. I think the movie did a small but very powerful commentary on this topic. For example, the book Josh is holding on their way to Horga, which was about runes and it has a Nazi symbol. Why are you reading that? Ask Pella. We're taught the runic alphabet in my village, so Joshua carries that around to annoy me. And we see more connections between some white supremacist ideas and the cult that are hinted at in the movie. So when they're finally driving into Helsingland, they're welcomed by a huge sign that says in Swedish, Stoppa mas invandringen till Helsingland, which translates to stop mass immigration to Helsingland. And also it says Rasta Frit Nur i Höst, which translates to vote free north this autumn. If you don't speak Swedish, of course, you're not going to understand what the sign says. And the movie didn't translate it intentionally. I'm assuming that because they wanted us to have the same experience the people who were driving into the town did. But I think that sign was intentional nonetheless. Also, the Free North name, which was made up for the movie, for me, as a person who lives in Sweden, I believe is a reference to Swedish far-right groups in Sweden, including like the Nordic resistance movement, whose main symbol is a rune stone. This sign indicates the type of area they're driving into, and I'm not saying everybody who lives in that area agrees with the message on the sign, but they're comfortable enough with the sign being there. I will go as far as saying that the people who live in that area, the majority are either part of the cult or just tolerate them because they have either some similar values or just don't care because they will not be directly affected by both the cult and the message in the sign, which is an attitude a lot of people have towards bigotry in general. 
Out of sight, out of mind. Horga, like white supremacy, is full of contradictions. For example, uh, we have the ceremony of Ete Stupa, which is just an excuse to get rid of the oldest members of their community. While at the same time, they celebrate the oracles who are an intentional product of inbreeding. They see blood purity as a strong bond that keeps the knowledge created by this community going, but at the same time, they would sometimes invite white people from outside to keep the population going, even though the person invited in to help them create more babies has no cultural connection with the group. And of course, they don't explicitly say that they only want white people to help them procreate more white babies, but it is heavily implied that they need white people to increase the community's population and also because like in the same way their own extreme practices doesn't help the community grow that much. Of course everybody but Danny was murdered by the cult but it was obvious that the only people who were considered as suitable matches for breeding were white men. And now that we're talking about babies and things like that, let's talk about the role of white women in white supremacy. White women in white supremacy are perceived as tools to produce as many white babies as possible. And we see this at the beginning of the movie when Pele mentions that there are a lot of Swedish women that can be impregnated by them. Um, that's for you. See, you could be getting that girl pregnant right now. And don't forget about all the Swedish women you can impregnate in June. Okay, guys. Don't forget about mm -hmm. all the Swedish milkmaids. Then let's talk about Maya in the movie. So Maya is 16 years old and Pele immediately mentions to Christian that, oh, she's 16, but it's completely allowed for you to have intimate relationships with her and how she was given permission from the elders in Horga to be with Christian and that she is at a perfect age to have a baby. And that reminded me of similar ideas that a lot of like far-right content creators and far-right figures have about women and how they say that the best age for women to have babies is between 16 and early 20s or something like that, which is like really, really like creepy and weird even outside like the white supremacy it's it's weird and sexist of course the role of white women under white supremacy is to produce white babies Harga sells a fake sense of sisterhood that makes Danny feel safe and welcome but Harga has a patriarchal hierarchy they sell the illusion of women being the center of the community and how important it is for them to participate in it but they only see them as a commodity Horga is full of contradictions. It preaches about life when only produces death and suffering from its members who need to be crushed by the system to keep it going. It preaches community when it exploits its members and see them as just objects. It uses culture, tradition, and ancient religious practices to justify horrible acts. But how long can it keep going until the weight of its contradictions crushes Horga? Thank you so much for watching and listening to this episode. Let me know what you think about it in the comment sections. Do you think Midsommar has an anti-white supremacist message? Why, why not? And also let me know what else you think about this episode and if you want me to do more episodes like this one. Don't forget to subscribe and share this episode. I'm also on TikTok and Instagram and on most podcast platforms. I have a lot of exclusive content on my Patreon as well and I want to thank my patrons. Thank you so much for supporting this project you are amazing once again thank you so much for watching and listening to this episode and see you next time bye